Hi everyone, it's been a while. Today we'll be working on the Wise Car. <clears throat> it's a, a piece of shit Peugeot, a 1.2 liter PureTech engine, so you know what's up. Um, <clears throat> we bought the car second hand back in, I think it was 2019. Uh, the first problem started emerging about one month into ownership of the car. We started looking into the things and that's when I found out the issue with the, the wet sump um, timing belt. Uh, back then it wasn't a big deal so the belt had some wear. Uh, it starts to lose a little bit of fragments and particles. Uh, they clog up the uh, oil pickup tube so we removed the sump, we drained the oil, we changed the, the entire timing uh, belt and uh, tensioners and we cleaned out the oil pickup from the sump. We thought everything was good at that point. The car had 112,000 kilometers when I did the work. We bought it at 102, I think it was, 102,000. Uh, it's always been maintained by a Peugeot dealership because it was a lease car. Uh, so it had a maintenance contract uh, when we bought it second hand from an independent uh, second hand car dealer. Um, so we thought everything was fine until we noticed it started to use a, a lot of oil. So the thing is when uh, when they do get the issues with the particles apparently the piston rings can get trapped particles behind them as well making them unable to completely seal and I'm guessing that's the issue so I've had the parts laying around for quite a while now to do the piston rings on this engine uh, but the issue was yesterday it completely gave out while, while driving uh, it, we sort of felt this coming um, and it apparently had one of the spark plugs which was completely fouled with oil so I'm still hoping it's the piston rings, but it might be something else. Um, most likely it will need a head gasket as well, but since the head is coming off the, the piston rings, the head gasket is getting replaced. Uh, I might also need to check the level of the, the mating surfaces for both the engine and the, the cylinder head, and we'll do that as well. Um, I don't know if I'll do a full video maybe just show you some parts whatever we'll see um, so yeah piece of shit engine luckily it's not, not that difficult to work on I have the special tool I'm hoping I have it here somewhere it might still be in my garage at home um, to lock the timing uh, so the, the camshafts uh, it's, it's a small relatively small engine most of the stuff is quite accessible the most difficult uh, part is just the stuff underneath if you don't have a lift. So I'm going to check up the car, uh, put some uh, axle stands underneath, take off the wheels and then we'll go from there. So we're two hours in and this is where we're at. So. We've removed all of the piping, the air filter housing. Um, I should get the lower part of the air filter out, but I need to take the battery out to make room. And once that is out, we're going to try and take the intake manifold out as well. Because for now, I guess I'm almost done up here. I might try to remove the heat shields to undo the turbocharger because these have a built-in um, exhaust manifold inside the head um, and then it will be time to remove the lower engine cover um, drain the oil sump drain the coolant because we need to support the engine from underneath and I need the sump off to release the conrods from the bottom of the crankshaft and to remove the head I need to remove the engine mount so I need to support the engine from underneath you would normally support it underneath the oil pan but 
since I need to take the oil pan off, I'm going to remove that one first and then place a jack somewhere underneath the engine to support it while I take the upper engine mount off. And then I need to also find my tool because I have the timing tool. I was looking for it at my garage at home and I didn't find it. So I thought it might have already been here. But I can't seem to find it now either. So I need to go back home and look some more. So yeah, we're making progress. This is about, yeah, two hours in, I guess. Um, just finished watching another video on a teardown just to... to make sure I, I've got everything right in terms of what I need to remove. So I'll work on the turbo, the intake manifold, remove the battery and then start underneath and drain the fluids. So my fantastic plan of uh, getting the pistons out has hit a snag because the designers designed this engine to have like a lower half of the block which completely covers the yeah the area where the crank is located uh, so it's it's like a reinforcement a lower half reinforcement uh, and in order to get that off you need to remove the gearbox yeah great design you need to remove the gearbox the clutch the dual mass flywheel yeah, in order to get to this plate over here and take the lower screws out. And the other two screws, they have access holes for them, but just this fucking plate, this stops you from taking the lower half off. So what does it look like? Um, see if you can see it without any additional lighting. So. This is the lower half now, so here is the, uh, the oil pan. So this is the lower half with the uh, oil pump, with the strainer, the dreaded strainer. So yeah, so no access to the connecting rods, to the lower half of the connecting rods. So that's why you need to take off this lower section of the block. It's a, a bunch of eight millimeter screws. Some of them are underneath the uh, oil filter right here. So I need to take the oil filter off as well. And because all of the support is gone for the engine, I needed a getaway to support the engine right now. And luckily, we have some room over here that supports what uh, a three by one and a half inch uh, beam yeah and uh, a ratchet strap and that's all I needed and luckily because this is such a little light engine we had a lot of room for activities to take the gearbox out all in all this has been one of the easiest cars and engines to take the gearbox out of. If I had known, I would have started with it and it wouldn't take me more than a day to change a clutch on this car. While on other cars, it's more of a hassle. So the thing I struggled with the most to get the gearbox off was the intermediate bearing on the right hand side axle drive shaft. Um, it was stuck a little bit because of the grease um, so I just degreased it and last time when I tried to remove it I heated up the intermediate bearing housing and that dissolved liquefied the grease and it came right out so yeah that's a good tip for anyone that's trying uh, to work on these engines as well we'll continue uh, removing the lower half so I'm gonna uh, support the engine with my um, jack and remove the oil filter housing oil filter and then we're going to take out the eight millimeter screws for the lower half i also need to undo the uh, air conditioning pump compressor uh, and support it with a um, 
rubber bands over there, bicycle bands, and then we should be ready once the lower half is off. And there's also a windage tray to take care of, and then we should be ready to remove the last engine mount and take off the head. Finally, uh, but in order to start this, I might need a second ratchet strap. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use a second ratchet strap. It's just that much much easier with, with the engine supported like this. Um, or I might try to put the uh, jack underneath and see how that goes. All right, let's continue on. I'm currently removing the camshafts and this is more for my own reference, but they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. And one to three is on the exhaust side and four to six is on the intake side. Okay, so, all right, let's go.